So as I was growing up in Pakistan uh, in the early 80s, it was a time where we had dictatorship in the country and human rights and especially women's rights were a big issue. And I remember coming home one day and my mother was, uh, the driver told me uh, after he picked me up from school uh, that my mother's in jail. And I was shocked. I mean, of course, I hadn't, I, this was very unexpected. And at that time, the first agitation of women's rights had started because there were laws that were very, uh, you know, that were very derogatory and discriminatory when it came to women in the country. And my mother had been part of this movement. So it really affected me at that time to try and uh, figure out for myself because I had not faced any discrimination in my house. I, uh, I, we come from a middle class, upper middle class family. And uh, the norm is that you don't really face that kind of discrimination as far as gender is concerned at home and I had three older brothers. So when I came home, I really began, first time it struck me that the world is different than what it is in my own home. I had all the opportunities in the world. I could do anything I wanted because my family was liberal, proactive, you know, open-minded in that sense. But things were different for women at large. I was doing research on women uh, participation and the impact that large World Bank projects in water and sanitation had on women. And this allowed me to travel across the country. And that, again, was a very major influence in making me think. Uh, you know, I believed, as a lot of people do, that poor people are poor because they don't work hard enough. Or, you know, you have these myths around poverty, uh, more about mindset and how uh, poor people think. And when I went out there and I spoke to, you know, hundreds of women from low-income communities across Pakistan, they were like, let us tell you something, you know. we." We have the same aspirations. We want a better life for our, our children. We want them to be educated. We want them to be clothed. We want them to be fed. And we want them to transition out uh, to other lives. So, you know, what are you talking about? For us, the major issue is lack of economic resources. So I ended up meeting Dr. Yunus from the Grameen Bank at a conference uh, in uh, Islamabad. And then he was just such an inspirational person. He's just a, I think, you know, the he's a spiritual person. He's not just doing uh, good work for humanity. He really exudes that sense of, you know, of saying that, you know, we can change the world. We can make it, dif we can make it different and we can eliminate poverty. So that really inspired me. And then I, uh, the journey was that I left my job at the World Bank and I went on to Bangladesh uh, and I spent a couple of months there learning from them. And uh, Dr. Yunus called me in one day and said, Roshane, we don't really need you in Bangladesh. There are enough microfinance specialists in Bangladesh. Go back to Pakistan and start something. And here's a check of $10,000 that I'm putting aside. You think about this. You use this money as seed capital to set up an organization that replicates our work there. Uh, this was uh, 1995. So I said to him, OK, I need more time. And uh, before I left, he said to me, well, the other thing I want to say to you that it's all right to make mistakes in one's lives. And if you do fail, just tell everyone it was Dr. Yunus's idea and it's his fault and not yours. Because he realized I was somebody who really wanted, who had really high standards for herself. And so I went back and then I thought about it. I discussed it with my family and they were all very, very positive. In fact, as I was sharing earlier, my grandmother was my first uh, donor, was our first donor. She gave us the money and said, you know, if you want to do anything for Pakistan, do it for the women. I think the most important lesson that I would want to share is to be true to being true to oneself. It's so important not to give up on one's values, on one's beliefs, and really till the very end, be authentic, be legitimate to who you are. Uh, hold yourself up to that task because without that, uh, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to um, be a sustainable uh, opportunity for oneself. So I think it's very important to know who you are, to know exactly wh why you are in this, uh, why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, not only that, I also think it's very, very important for women to, um, to understand that as women leaders, they're going to be different. They don't have to emulate uh, their male colleagues. They can be who they are. So again, I think a, a lot of times we want to, we have leadership models that are very Western and that are very patriarchal or male centric. So we need to change that. We need to know that as women leaders, we're going to be different and that's fine. And we are unique after all. So I think that realization is also something with time that we need to uh, come to terms with.